harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Hello, I'm Dominic Monaghan. And I'm Billy Boyd. We are here back in a podcast studio. And I don't know about you, Bills, but it feels like things are really cooking now. <laughs> really cooking, Do you know what I mean? Right. It's like we've put it out into the universe. There was a while there where we were kind of screaming into the great void. Do you yeah. know what I mean? No one was listening. No, no one's and listening. now I feel like, what, with Instagram and YouTube, everyone's starting to pick up on the fact that we've got a podcast. So you n- now you think people are listening? Yeah. Is anyone watching? I think people are watching as well, right? Hello, YouTube. If you guys are listening and you want to watch, you can come watch us at The Friendship Onion. On, on YouTube. YouTube. But if you'd rather listen, come find us anywhere that you get your podcasts. Yeah. Can we talk about your body position? I've, I've, what I've done here is I'm sitting quite, uh, for anyone who's just listening, I'm sitting quite erect with my right leg across my left. You're adopting what I like to call the Michael Corleone in the Godfather position. You know, like when he actually becomes the Godfather. Yeah. He, he, he's just sat in this very powerful position. But even though I feel powerful when I'm in that shape, yeah. I don't think I look great. Like I'm a bit insecure now. Well, see, before when yeah, you were sitting like, like that. that, you looked like, to me, a big dog. You know, like a Great Dane yeah. who sat his butt on the sofa but doesn't really know what to do with his so legs. I think I should lounge a little bit more? That's quite nice. Our producer, John, just told me to lean in this direction. Well, that's good. Now you look interested and interesting. Well, thanks. Um, how was your drive over? To here? Yeah. It was all right, actually. Um <clears throat> I was going. I was going to listen to a podcast, right? Because I enjoy a podcast. Well, of course now. you do. Um, but I, I couldn't get myself organised, and you know the when I I plugged my my phone into the car, mm. the car wouldn't recognise it, Ugh. and it was getting me so annoyed. So I ended up listening to a nineties channel. Oh, okay. So I was listening to some music from the nineteen nineties instead. That's one of the more irritating moments of my life with technology where you think, I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I've turned it on. I've linked you. Just because you can't talk to this, there's nothing else I can do here. I'm not in a place where I can step in and do anything. And now it just becomes a very expensive piece of plastic. (laughs) Well, here's the thing then that you'll like. I went to the the car dealership yesterday because my trunk wouldn't open for the last... My boot. uh, uh, Or trunk for the USA. Mm. And I hadn't opened for about a week. Right. And I couldn't open it with the button on the key. Mm. I couldn't open it with my hand manually. Mm. It just wouldn't open. Right. So I took it. I made um, I made an appointment early in the morning, 8 a.m. I drove the car over there. I said, this, this trunk will not open. And he went into the glove compartment. And there's a button there that says valet button. Valet? Mm-hmm. And he pressed that. He said, try it now. And it opened fine. So what, what's a valet button? What's all that about? Apparently, it's if you drop your car off at a valet, then you can press this button and it stops people getting into your trunk. Say, for instance, you've left your your diamond rings in there or something. Right. How would I ever know that? Yeah, you wouldn't know that. I was thinking there was like an angry family of raccoons on the inside of your trunk, holding it down, enjoying the darkness, you know. That was what I had in my head (laughs) before then. Is it not true that a family of rats ate your car? Mm, Yeah, so I, this is interesting because we come full full circle with your wife here. Remember talking to your wife saying, oh, you guys have got to get a compost heap. You know, we (laughs) eat so much fruit and vegetables and it's a great place to put it and... Your wife said, I'm a, I'm a little worried about maybe bringing in more mice and rats to the back of our garden. I said, well, yeah, yeah you, you will do that, but there's mice and rats everywhere. Yeah. My compost heap was directly opposite the kind of front wheelbase of my car. And mice and rats are relatively smart, whereby they're going to get food from there. Mm-hmm. And then on the way back, they think, well, here's a warm place i don't know it's a car I don't i'm know a it's road a car, but it's it's nice and warm because the batteries stay warm in a tesla yeah. for ages and they burrowed into my car but can i tell you bills what? i think a couple of them died 
in there. Oh, God. Because when you're driving, your battery gets so hot yeah. that it would probably cook a family of mice. Oh. So I would turn on my air conditioner and the smell of cooked dead mouse would come through the AC unit. And I got my car washed and valeted like you were yeah. talking about. Uh, and they eventually, I went to Tesla and they eventually ripped it out and they said, look, there's like like a bird's nest. There's like a nest of dead mice in here. So oh. I had to get rid of my compost heap. And it made me think, Billy's wife is actually correct. I that's, probably shouldn't have a compost heap so close to things. That's that. sort of instant karma or something, isn't it? Or it is a little like bit. That. I was going to ask you, because obviously in Britain, yeah, me living in Manchester, you living in Glasgow, you jump in the car every so often, but usually it's a, 15, 20 minute drive type thing. Mm. In Los Angeles, we're much more accustomed to a 45 minute drive, an hour long drive. Has that yeah. changed in any way the, the way that you approach your car? Because my car now is in some way like an office. No, you're absolutely right. And when the car does connect to your phone, I love like sending texts and things, not even business, but just to like say you. Yeah. I love you, Dom. You're great. Yeah, you're great. Why are you so great? Yeah. And then, do you want to send this message? Yeah, I'll send that. Mm. And then I'll send maybe five, six, eight messages, and I think, I did something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, You know, I'm a big fan of twofers, getting two for the price of one. So I used to love filling up my car with petrol, or as they say in the United States, gas, which is crazy because it's not gas, it's a liquid. Oh, yeah. Weird. And whilst filling up my car with petrol cleaning the windscreen because I think, well, I can't move because I'm waiting for the car to fill up. So I'm going to get a two for the price of one here. I thing. love that. And like you said, when you're driving, if you can send a little voice message that turns into a text, you're getting two for the price of one, you know. Mm-hmm. On the drive over, I had said to you, I'm going via a coffee shop. Would you like anything? Because you and I are fans of coffee. You said, no, I'm all right. I said, I'm going to get a little snack, a little breakfast, maybe a, a, a croissant, maybe a little pan of chocolat, something like that. And you said, I will not eat a savoury croissant. Well, yeah, because that's what you offered me. You said they do a lovely croissant with mushrooms. But you love mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I love croissants. But neither the two should ever meet. But a croissant is not sweet. It's not like you're getting a sweet, cakey thing with a mushroom. They're savoury. Croissant's savoury. Well, to me, though... A croissant should be eaten with a little jam. Right. Or maybe, I mean, maybe a Nutella. Yeah. I could have it with just butter. But if you're having a croissant with butter, that's basically a heavily buttered pastry with butter on top. Dom. That's heart disease. I absolutely love butter. Yeah, me too. I'll take butter (laughs) on anything. Remember my beautiful mum telling me years ago, that if she could eat anything with no health restrictions whatsoever, it would be bread and butter. And I think I'm oh, that way too. Yeah. A yeah. nice fresh bread. Oh. Stick some butter on there. Oh. Have a nice cup of tea. Oh. What could be nicer? Guys, if hey? you have any buttery stories, please send in any stories concerning butter heavily, whether it's eating butter or using butter to maybe fix a tool or a piece of machinery. Please or s- sunburn. <laughs> spreading it on sunburn <laughs> if you have any questions you can also send us them to speakpipe.com forward slash tfo yeah now the speakpipe.com forward slash tfo is, oh. a, is an answer phone service wait a minute it's not actually tfo it's the friendship on you oh that's right we're, we're calling the show tfo now because that's what the cool kids say but if you want to leave a message for us at speakpipe.com forward slash friendship onion that means that maybe we'll play that answer phone message in a upcoming episode of the podcast. And here's a little tip for you guys right. out there. If you want to have a chance to be on the show, try and ask us a question that we've not been asked before, right? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be Lord of the Rings. It could no, be anything. It could be anything. It could be a buttery question. But, you know, Billy and I have probably asked, what is it like to play a Hobbit? You know, what's Peter Jackson like? What's your favourite thing about New Zealand? Ask us something that we might have never been answered before. And there's a much higher chance that we'll answer that question. Nice, nice, Tom. You know what I watched this week? What was that? Nomadland. Oh, I saw that. Which was, did it win Best Picture? I think it did. It did win Best Picture, yeah. I find her really uh, kind of free 
in both her performance but also as a person. Did you see her at the yeah. Oscars? In, Frances McDormand. Yeah. She just seems very yeah. childlike in a beautiful way. Um, I love that film. The score was amazing. It's lovely. Very simple. And I don't know anything about that community of people that, you know, kind of sell up their house and drive across the United States. But the amazing thing about the United States is it's such a massive landmass mm-hmm. that you could spend 30 years driving around it and you wouldn't get bored because from state to state. Yeah. It's so different, isn't it? Well, it, it totally amazed me when I heard the percentage of Americans that don't have a passport. Mm. But then, when you actually think about it, there is so much to see in the United States of mm. America, mm. as it showed you in that movie, mm. that you could easily spend your life just looking at um, different states. Mm. I love that film. There's a great moment in it where she is kind of chatting to a young drifter. They meet at one point. She gives him a lighter. And then a few weeks later, they meet again on the road, sit down and share a cigarette together. And she asks him all the questions that I think she's got in her head about herself, Mm -hmm. where she says, you know, is there no one who loves you? Is there no one who misses you? Is there no place that you can go back to? You should do that. It's important for you to, you know, go go after that girl or go see your parents. And the the kid kind of says, ah, what do you know, old woman? In a nice mm-hmm. way, you know, don't tell me what to do type thing. But I love that moment because I think those questions are flying around her head. Yeah. You know? Beautiful film. Yeah, and you, you're quite good at, uh, at looking at a film and, and thinking, oh, that moment meant that. And, you know, and what did you think when she had violent diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> and in that bucket. I remember you telling me, you, you, you saw the show before, you saw the film before me, and you said, what a performance by Francis McDonald. It's an amazing because performance. No, no makeup, no hair, Brilliant. no vanity. And I said, oh yeah, that's impressive. And you said, well, not only that, but she has violent diarrhea into a bucket. <laughs> but they don't cut, do they? I mean, you see But it sort thing. of comes from, do you feel as though, I felt like, is there a scene missing where she ate something bad? And it, Well, what did she? Was there an eating thing? There before? wasn't really. She was. What was she? Was she? Because there's a scene with David. I'd never know how to say yeah. his name. Strathairn. Yeah, Strathairn. Strath. There's a scene with him where they aren't they cooking together? Isn't he in a kitchen and they're cooking, or he's cooking and she's watching? But is that not a different? I felt as though, I I thought that came from nowhere. But then, but doesn't diarrhea, diarrhea often <laughs> does? <laughs> <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Diarrhea does come from nowhere yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's a surprise a lot of the time, isn't it? Well, guys, if you've seen Nomadland and you want to tell us about what you thought about the film or... Best film of last year, yeah, according to the Oscars, and I might agree. I or, thought it was brilliant. Or if you've travelled around the United States on road trips and there's something that you want to recommend to Billy and I, because I'm sure at some point in the future we, we could take a road trip, we could take this show... On the road, why not? Wouldn't that be amazing? Or even if you've ever had violent diarrhoea. Yeah. Leave us a note. I have a story that I think I'll probably say for like episode, you know where this is We'll keep that, that's episode 20, 25. Episode 20 or 25 or something like that, where I had a wardrobe malfunction involving feces at work let's just leave it at that <laughs> i feel as though you've started it now yeah have well, you uh, well i don't think we can go into i think no. this is more of an easter egg i think we'll, you're right we'll, we'll get to a point where we have something like a million followers and then i'll drop the story about shitting myself in front of a whole <laughs> crew of people at work. <laughs> please rate review and subscribe because when we get to a million I'll subscribers dom will tell the story i'll do it Billy and Dom eat the world. All right, guys. Well, listen, every week we ask you to send us in suggestions of either a an item of food or maybe a beverage that from your neck of the woods is a staple that we might not have heard about. Now, this is a slight cheat this week, isn't it? Because we have heard about this. We have heard about it, but William. we did want to discuss it. So on you go. What are we doing this week? Well, this week, my friend, we have Bundaberg. Ginger beer. Now, we know this because our esteemed director and filmmaker friend, Peter Jackson, was a massive fan 
of Bundaberg ginger beer, wasn't it? Yeah, so we started drinking it in New Zealand. I remember going, we were invited to Pete's house quite a bit at the weekend just to hang out or maybe do some work. And in his fridge, he would always have Bundaberg. And he was a big fan. He was always pushing it. It's very sugary. I don't care. Like butter, I don't mind some sugar. I made ginger beer with my dad and brother when we were kids. And the amount of sugar that you have to put into it Mm. to feed off the sugar to stay Mm. alive is incredible. It's quite disturbing, isn't it? When you Even if you make lemonade, the amount of sugar you've got to put in there kind of puts you off drinking it, really. Now, this is an Australian ginger beer. I think a lot of people think it's a Kiwi ginger beer. Very often in a stubby little bottle. We've got them in cans today. I've never seen them in a can before. Me either. That was John that got us them. But your friend, that our esteemed producer, John. But uh, friends out there, Australians, I would guess, who are used to that beautiful stubby bottle um, will be a little irked that we're drinking it out of a can. But still the same taste, I think. Let's see. Mm. Oh, sugary. It's so sugary. I mean, we are chemical factories at the end of the day, right? We wake up in the morning yeah. and you, we're basically just like filling ourselves with different chemicals, whether that be a happiness chemical or a sugary chemical or a coffee yeah. chemical. Do you know what I mean? Just for us to work as a machine. Yeah. And if we can make it tasty or lovely, then all the better. I'm going to try it now, Dom. Try it. Now, I'm sure you guys can see out there, if you're watching on YouTube... The Friendship Onion YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. This little can right here, 42% of your daily sugar needs is in this can. That is a lot. Well, that gets almost half of it done. Yeah. I'm not sure if you need 100% of your sugar every day. (laughs) Really? Yeah, I think sometimes you can go like 70% and it's not a big deal. There's sugar in things you don't know, though. Mm. Oh, it's super good. Ginger beer was kind of invented at a time where they were trying to preserve the quality of the water, stop it from being compromised. So they would add ginger and sugar into a fermentation process, Mm. thus keeping the quality of that water drinkable. That's how they found ginger beer. And it used to have a lot of alcohol in it. Right, not anymore. Although, does this have some alcohol in it? I think, well... Trace amounts. No, I don't think so. Because it used to be there was up to 11% alcohol. That's a lot of alcohol. That is a lot because like a strong beer might be kind of 6%. Yeah, really strong beer, I would think. But then they they put on taxis onto beverage with more than 2%. So people who made ginger beer said, let's cut that. Let's cut down the alcohol. It was always stored in stone bottles because it was such an... Ugly liquid. People didn't want to look at it. Is that why? Was it the cloudiness? Cloudiness. It? it just didn't look like something would want to drink it. So they would put it into a stone bottle. And even now, if I see a ginger beer in a stone bottle, I think that looks good. Really good. And also, I think the, the Bundaberg people recommend that before you open it, you're supposed to gently tip it up and down. So the, I like a cloudy ginger beer. Mm. I don't like a clear ginger beer. I want the cloud. I like traditional lemonade. Not a big fan of normal lemonade. And I was astounded when it came to the United States and found out that lemonade over here Mm. is flat. It's like lemon cordial, isn't it? Yeah. But lemonade for me growing up was like Sprite and 7-Up. Yeah, we call it that. Mm. They don't call it lemonade. That's something else. No. Mm. Guys, if you've never had a Bundaberg, they're not sponsoring the show or anything Mm. like that. We just like them because they're so tasty and they remind us of, of New Zealand. But if you've never had a Bundaberg ginger beer, go find them. And if there's a food item out there that you guys love, that you want us to taste. Maybe it's super tasty. Maybe it's a little weird. Yeah. You know, there's there's some strange tinned fish from Sweden that is supposed to be absolutely disgusting. But people in Sweden love it. They love it. Send us it or tell us to buy it and yeah. we'll buy it. We'll get it. We'll get it. But apparently, uh, Bundaberg is uh, still a family-ran business. Oh, is that right? Even after all these years, I think it's been around for like 60 years. I like that idea. Mr. and Mrs. Fleming. Oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Fleming, or the or the Fleming family, I guess. Isn't who... that, I love it when it's like a family thing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, they say that about, like, Johnson & Johnson, they say, a family company. And I always wonder what that means. Hmm. You know what I mean? A family yeah. company. It just sounds nice, maybe. Hmm. They're trying to lull you into a false sense of security. And they did. So there we go. There's Bundaberg 
Ginger Beer will be back next week with another episode of Dom and Billy Eat the World. Or is it Billy and Dom Eat the World? I think it's Billy and Dom Eat the World, isn't it? Yeah, whatever it is. I always put you ahead of me because you're my senior. Well, I feel like Billy and Dom do something sounds better, but Dom Monaghan and Billy Boyd sounds better. Really? So I think if we're using both our names, you first. If it's just singular names, me first. (coughs) You sent me something the other day. can't remember what it was. What was that? And it had your date of birth on it. And I was like, my God, he was born in the 60s. Mm-hmm. It's 1967. 68. That's the year that the Beatles' White Album came out. I remember it. Amazing. All right, we're moving on. It's time for... I Will Take the Ring. Here we are. It's time for a quiz, Dom. It's quiz time! It's quiz time. So now the rules have slightly changed this week. Because we're evolving the quiz in a way, aren't we? Well, we're all evolving in some way. So, a good point, actually. So, yeah. so we've got Nicholas and Ruben here, and they're going to be answering questions against each other. But also, Ruben, you're going to be on my team, Dom, and Nicholas, right. you're going to be on Billy's team. Hello, and Nicholas. If you're stuck on a question, Hello. but it can only be one question, you can ask your teammate to try and help you out, but we might not know the answer because we don't know the answer. So just letting you know. Sounds super fun. Let's go. You might might know it, so you might not need us, but if you need a port in a storm, it might be one of us. Mm. All right. So who's first, Bills? You go first. You go first. All right. So am I asking, do I ask Nicholas all of his questions and you ask Ruben all of his questions? Uh, No, uh, the opposite, isn't isn't it? The opposite? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, Ruben, here we go. Here's question (laughs) number one for you. All my life. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this is so easy. What is the name of the Ent who carries Merry and Pippin through Fangorn Forest? Is it Grey Tree, Tree Stash, Robert the Great, or Tree Beard? You know, it's a tough list that you got for me there, yeah. but I'm going to have to go with Tree Beard. Is the correct answer. That's one for Ruben. Lovely stuff. One for Ruben and Dominic. Nice, yeah. nice work. Question two. Who tries to destroy the ring at the Council of Elrond? Is it Aragorn, Gimli, Samwise, or Boromir? Mm. I'm going to have to go with Gimli, son of Gloin. Now, I don't know if it is. I, I feel like I'm trumping that as well, because doesn't Gimli try and hit it with his axe? Yeah, Gimli tries to hit it with an axe, John. So what does Boromir do, John? Boromir just sits there and says we can't just walk into Mordor. Nicholas, I'm sorry about our I'm producer. sorry about our producer here. Hold on till we check this. I, I, <laughs> Boromir makes some memes during the council. Yeah, he's yeah, basically I've seen that memes. memes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the fa- there's no need for a fact check we know John it's Gimli I mean Boromir says you can't just simply have a walk into Bor- uh, into no, Boromir no, into, no, into uh, Mordor no but I thought Gimli jumped up and tried to yeah hit he hits it with an axe Nicholas mm. Boromir Ruben, doesn't sorry. even have an axe we've wasted your time <laughs> moving well, maybe on reason y'all, maybe Nicholas. the reason y'all are confused is because y'all are hiding behind the bushes during that scene yeah, exactly right. <laughs> eating biscuits uh, John, mm-hmm. we're, we're gonna we're gonna overrule you. We're gonna say it's Gimli. Sorry, it's one what? Oh yes. boy, one each. <laughs> we love go it. On, when our, we love it when our producer's wrong. Right, Ruben. Here we go. Question number three: the, right, retur- the Return of the King was nominated for eleven Academy Awards, but how many did it win? Is it A four, B seven, C ten, or D all of the eleven? Ooh, you are testing my knowledge. Thank I know you. it's either I'm I'm stuck between all of them or ten, but because mm-hmm. I know in total the trilogy won seventeen. I do know that. Oh, wow, really? Well, you know, but if you're not me... sure, you know you can always throw one to Dom, yeah, but you, you then can... that's it, gone. But then that's it. But then no, that's it. Um, how many questions are there total? Oh, that's a great Good question. question. Gotta gotta get that strategy. I think is the t- is the. T- I would say there is five each. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with eleven. I think it won all eleven. Ruben, it's the correct answer. It's the correct yeah. answer, Ruben. Well done. And you know how you know that Ruben is because Mr. Steven Spielberg got up on stage and he said it's a clean sweep. 
Sweet. Which means we won everything. See, the, the reason I knew it is because I don't remember an even number being on the little DVD box that I bought. Right. I don't remember it being a solid 10. Right. Ah, you see. I he thinks very mathematically. Yeah, does, good Ruben. for you, Ruben. <laughs> I remember when Steven, because we were there at the Oscars, I remember Steven Spielberg he saying. He did say clean sweep. He though. said, it's, it's a clean sweep. And I looked over at Billy to celebrate and you were pouring champagne all over <laughs> your head. You all remember? over. And I'd taken off my top. Yeah. You remember that? It's beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. Like an Adonis. Okay. Okay, next question. Which actor of the fellowship is the tallest in real life? Is it John Reese davis Sean Astin, Billy Boyd, or Mr. Dominic Monaghan? Hello. Um, well... It's a tough one. If I remember correctly, the way you had to film it meant that uh, Gimli had to be taller than all the hobbits, so I'm going to go with John Reese davies It's the correct answer! It's 2-2. Two, two. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. So all the hobbits were sort of the same height. Yeah, kind of. Kinda. And then John Reese davies is like half a foot taller, which means the hobbits and Gimli could act in the same scenes without any special effects. True story. Although we it's, didn't do a massive amount of stuff with John Reese davies no. because unfortunately he was allergic to the prosthetics that they put on his face. So he could only yeah he mm -hmm. could only work every third day. So he'd work on a Monday, then he'd have to have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off, and work on a Friday. It was a scheduling nightmare. Let me tell you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it's two each, guys. Two each. Here we go. Ruben, this is a tough one. Okay. How old Ooh. was Frodo Baggins in the Lord of the Rings books? Was he fifty-one, twenty-seven, thirty-two? Or my favourite number, apart from 74, 68. So, so I'm going to have to give props to my father on this one who read me the books. Nice. But from what I remember, it's been about 100 years, but I would say 51. Is the correct answer? Incredible nice knowledge. Nice work, Ruben. Unbelievable, Ruben. Nice work. Nicholas, this is a difficult one. This is oh, to boy. keep it. At three all, are you ready? Ready. What do the elves call hobbits? Do they call them Perianath, the Perianath, or the Onadrim, or the Urukai, or the Hairy Feet? I'll give you those again because it's difficult. <laughs> A. The Perianath, the Onodrim, the Urukai, the Hairy Feet. So I'm going to have to go with, go with the Perianath. It's the right answer! Wow! It's three all! Nicholas, oh, Nicholas did you just close. pull that out or did you know it? I, uh... I might have known that before. Well, I, Dug deep into the memory for that one. I Tremendous didn't, knowledge. I didn't know that. Didn't you? I no, knew it. I didn't know that. <laughs> all right. It's, what is it? 3-3? Three, three. It's 3-0. Three, oh, it's wow. very exciting. Okay. We're coming right down to it now. All right, Ruben. Here we go. All right. Question seven. Mm -hmm. What is Gollum's name for the sun? Is it the heated head, yellow face, hurted light, or Burning Man. Crazy. I'll give you those again, it's Ruben. Very difficult. It's very difficult, this What one. does Gollum call the sun? Does he call it Heated okay. Head, Yellow Face, Hurted Light, or that amazing ceremony in the desert, Burning Man? Ooh. Ooh, this is really testing me. Um, That's a tough one. I, yeah. bet he, I bet he only says it once or twice in the books as well. Yeah, See, I'm, I'm trying to figure out which, which like, what it would sound like he would say? Because yeah. I have no idea, to be very honest. Try and channel Andy Circus now. <laughs> there you go. That's very good. I'm language. going to say, did you say the heated sun? Is that one there? No, I'll give you them again, Ruben. Here but they to come be fair, again, you're Ruben. almost bordering on cheating. Uh, the answers are heated head, yellow face, hurted light, or burning man. And remember, you still have a phone. Light. You still have a phone, a friend. You still have a phone, a friend. But if you want, I do. But if you want to go for it, you you go with your gut. I'm gonna say hurted light. Hurted light is 
not the right answer. It's no! yellow face. Yellow face, oh, he no. calls it. <laughs> Unlucky, Ruben. So that's, all, that's all right. Nicholas will trip up on this one. Nicholas, right. he's got no chance. It's time to soar ahead. Oh, boy. Question number eight. How does Farmer Maggot keep unwanted people off his property? Does he use poisonous mushrooms, a murderous scarecrow, a pack of trained dogs, or Tom Bombadil? Mm. Over to you, Nicholas, for the answer Over to that to question. You. Take your time. I'm, no to pressure. Go, I got a, no pressure. To I got a hunch ahead. that it's a pack of trained dogs. Final answer? I think, uh oh. Is yeah, that your. F I'll, I'll, st I'll stick with it. You're absolutely right, Nuggers! It's fantastic! You've soared ahead! All right, no. It's let's, 4 3! Let's not get overexcited. There Ruben. might be no way back now! You're still in, you're still in the zone be. here. We'll see. Here we go. Right, here, here we go. Question nine, Ruben. Which member of the cast or crew had personally met Professor Tolkien? Is it Ian McKellen? Oh, McKellen, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Christopher Lee, Peter Jackson, or Bernard Hill? I'm going to say Christopher Lee. You sure you don't want to use me as a, a phone a friend? You know, you, you, sure. About that. Let's phone. Yeah, I want. Let's phone you, Dominic. Oh. Let, <laughs> Dominic, I'll have you take this one. I I think. Well, because I've heard him say it, I think it's Christopher Lee. Oh, I would think so. Our producer's telling us, it is the correct answer! Well done, sir. Let's go. Nice well work, done. Ruben. So we're at four each. Is that correct? Is that right? Is you've, got a, you've got a question in yeah, hand. Yeah, we'll get one in hand. We'll get one in hand next This to win it. This to win it, right? <laughs> yes, oh, this no is to win it. Which of these are not a public inn in the Shire? They are not a public inn in the Shire. The Green Dragon, the Prancing Pony, the Old Guest House, the Slaughtered Lamb. This for all the marbles. And just so you know, there is a bag of marbles as a, as a prize. Nicholas. <laughs> well, the Prancing Pony, you guys went, you were a... Uh frequent patron of so i'm not gonna pick that good good deduction were we in the green dragon the green dragon the prancing pony the old, the old guest house the slaughtered, slaughtered lamb the prancing pony is in brie oh lovely bit of knowledge there but is i'm my oh, uh, geographical knowledge is a bit hazy i don't know where the boundaries you, of the shire of are. course you can ask william mm -hmm. he sat to my left you can ask Hello. him if you choose to um what are, what were the other two again? Oh, so God. there is four. Which of these is not a public inn in the Shire? The Green Dragon, the Prancing Pony, the Old Guest House, and the Slaughtered Lamb. I'm gonna have to yeah, hurry I, you I, might, I might I might ring you in on You're bringing one. me in? Right, I think, I think I that's a good idea because I'm gonna have to bring it up again here with our producer John. Mm -hmm. Because he's got there's one answer here, mm -hmm. but I would say the Prancing Pony, as you said, Nicholas, is in Brie, mm. and Brie is not in the Shire. Oh, John! John. Oh, my Johnny! Dearest John. My dearest John! Oh, oh yeah, you our, mean a public, a public in, in Middle Earth, John? Do, uh, you we, mean uh, 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 an in anywhere in uh, Middle, Middle Earth? Earth. Uh, yeah, fact John, checkers you're a disgrace. There. Yeah, they're, they're, they're digging on Google right now. You're, I think we need some fact checkers because... At the end of the show, we will take you outside and thrash you, John, to within an inch of your <laughs> life. We're going to have to go to another one, Nicholas, because I think they gave... I think that was a curveball, as they say, <laughs> in, in America, <laughs> because I don't think the Prancing Pony or the Slaughtered Lamb is in, in well, the Well, the Slaughtered Lamb definitely isn't, because that's know. from a different movie. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It? <laughs> <laughs> the Slaughtered Lamb's from a completely different So we're going film. to give you another one here, Nicholas. So there is a bar called the Slaughtered Lamb from another movie. Is it from an American werewolf in London? Game of Thrones, Shadow and Bone, or The Princess Bride? Inconceivable! What movie <laughs> has the bar The Slaughtered Lamb? 
Nicholas, if you don't know this, seriously, I'm going to hunt you down. Come on. Well. This is a classic pub. Hunt me down like a Ruben werewolf knows in London, it. Look, because that's going to be my answer. Yeah, what is it? Werewolf in London. Is that for He's London? done it! He's, He's only done, done it! one, Nicholas! Nice work, Nicholas. Ruben unlucky, I'm sorry. I'm Nicholas, sorry. there All is right. obviously prizes. Is there, Dom? Yes, we will be sending you a slaughtered lamb. Uh, in oh, the perfect. next couple of weeks in the mail. <laughs> Enjoy that. And uh, a bag of marbles. And a bag of I, marbles. I heard that promise. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Guys, it's lovely to talk to you both. Have a great rest excellent. of your day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for coming for on us. the show. That was great. I apologize thank you, thank you. for our producer, John. Yeah, sorry about John. We're going to be doing that a lot. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. What a fantastic quiz. This yes, week. it was, Dom. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Nicholas. And Thank if you'd you. like to be one of the contestants, how do they get in touch, Bill? Well, you need to send us an email to friendshiponion at castmedia.com. That's cast with a K. Let us know that you want to be part of the quiz. And at some point in the not too distant future, we'll probably have a prize. Maybe a mug or a. Uh, Some, something there's got to be you know I mean? a friendship onion Some something. Friendship a, onion merch. A lapel. Badge, a button, a t shirt. You never know. What is it? Well, that was fun. Or maybe you'd like to quiz us about something. Obviously, come come, like hang out in our quiz. But if you've got a question for us, some deep dive into Lord of the Rings lore that you think, I wonder if these guys even know it, ask us. You can email us, friendshiponion at castmedia.com, or you could send us a message, speakpipe.com forward slash the friendship onion. That's where you leave a voice message for us. Yeah. And the email isn't the friendship onion, it's just friendship onion at cast.com. Castmedia.com. Castmedia, I mean. Get a grip. Just to clarify. So here we go. Oh, very exciting as we look into Dom's, Dom's diary. diary. Now, let's set the scene. Hang on. Oh, Christ. I nearly went off my chair then. <laughs> that was exciting. I get so excited, it, I almost flew off my chair. It, it is exciting. Right, so here, what's the date? Is there a date? Oh, did you no put a date? date? You did you learn nothing at school? Oh, that's a shame. They you meant to put a date at the top left. Yeah, there normally is a date, but there's none anyway. Can I make one up? September yeah. 24th. September 24th, so here we go. 1973. I feel like I literally can't get through wetter and makeup this morning. <laughs> Ooh, oh, it's a dramatic drama sad. queen. Carry on, Tom. I am in much need of sleep and nutrition. Well, I sound like Oscar Wilde, don't <laughs> I? <laughs> it sounds like you're on <laughs> Desert Island. <laughs> Carry on, Tom. <laughs> Just winced at cold glue on my feet. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, but it really fucking goes through me today. Look at the size of that. Look, on an entire page, I'm having a nightmare. Okay. Oh. Here we go. We turn the page. Very good. So that was it for the So day. you're actually writing that as you're getting your hobbit getting feet, feet on. I, mean, I couldn't. I was having a tough day. That's the day finished, is it? That was the day finished. I couldn't go anymore. I just couldn't. You couldn't write anymore. Right. Next Harry. day. Next so, day. So I wrote that day, which was the day that I've just talked about. I had an outrageous migraine. <laughs> Felt sick. Horrible headache. And we conveniently were in dodgy stress positions, hands and feet tied, but it was literally cured by the Beatles on the... Can't read my own writing. On the stereo to Pai Kakariki. What were we doing in Pai Kakariki? <clears throat> That's a fantastic name of a place, but I can't actually remember where it was. Don't remember either. Pai Kakariki. So, we, so I was having a tough time. Right. We, dr- we drove to Pai Kakariki, listening to the Beatles. I felt much better. Ah. On the way there, we saw pu- Pukakos. Pukakis. Pukakis. Is, is a that a bird? bird? Yeah. New Flightless. Bird. Flightless. Like Flightless. a or a yes, kakapo. I think so. In the afternoon, I killed the Witch King. Wow, what a well, day. Well, that's a big day, isn't it? So you would have gone off and done something else, and I would have been in with Miranda stabbing the Witch King in the knee. I didn't even think I was there that day when you did. That was a big day for you. I think, that was, I think that was on a set and then maybe we covered it later on on location because I don't think we uh. were down in... Because wasn't that Twizel when we were doing The Witch King? Anyway, it's all, it's all documented here. Uh, in the afternoon, I killed The Witch King. Yay. And after 
we did that, I said to Pete, that is the peak of my story. And Pete Jackson said, what? Like he thought I was wrapped. So he was confused. But then I said, didn't you get me a cake or anything? See, you just forget all these things. Which made everyone laugh. So we had a pretty big week. The biggest in terms of action for Mary. Did the Palantir scene with Billy. Oh, yeah. That so was a you, good one. Yeah. Gra- was that you grabbing hold of it? it or must, was that yeah. Saruman's, Saruman's um, castle? The flooding of his castle? Or do you think that's in bed? I think it's in bed when I get up and you say, don't, don't, what are you doing? Sort of thing. Right. Did the Palantir stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Meeting Billy on the battlefield, which we nailed. Oh, that was And it was good. great. Yeah. And then this is lovely. Wow. Just two people who really like and admire each other talking in Tupelo about how cool it is to be working on such an amazing project. So we must have been in a so, great... Well, we're back, in, we're back in Wellington, back in Wellington there. At that point. So, if we're in Tupelo, Tupelo was, a, was a, a bar, if you'll remember. It was I a do. pub. And do you remember when we first got to New Zealand, we asked the locals, what's a good bar? And they said Tupelo, and we walked around all night looking for a bar called Two Pillows. Yeah, we people even asked were. people, <laughs> "Where do you know where Two Pillows is? No, no. <sighs> I do remember that. Um, what else is this? Uh, spent the last week trying to get people to sign my book, Lord of the Rings book. Oh, is this near the end? It must be near the end. And all I have is John Reese davis and Alan Lee and Peter Jackson to do. Surfed at Castle Point and laughed and laughed with Orlando and Tanya at Elijah. So Elijah did something funny. <laughs> that was it. You may have told us what he did. Yeah. So that's Dom's diary. Like I said, we can't do that every week because I think it's way too hot. Do well, I, mean? I think that's brilliant, that, Dom. Uh, that was really enlightening and I enjoyed it because for one thing, it told us that getting those hobbit feet on was was actually torture after a while because you had to stand up right stand and as up. you said it's not painful but it's just somebody constantly poking at your feet cold glue cold alcohol is cold uh, five in the morning Ugh. maybe you've got a little cut on your foot so then the alcohol goes into your foot and it's sharp and mm. like you said it's not painful so you can't make a big deal out of it but it's the fact that you're doing it every day going through this rigmarole and I would say, what, three out of four times they wouldn't see your feet? So we'd be like, really, mm-hmm. guys, are you putting our feet on? You know they're only shooting close-ups. It's going to take us an hour and a half to put them on, 40 minutes to take them off, yeah. and they're like, sorry, we've got been to told got we've got to, to put them on. You never know. The other thing, because I remember Pete Jackson loving this, the scene where we're all asleep, you wake up, and yeah. you go grab the Palantir. Do you remember yeah. Pete Jackson loved the idea of us doing an alternative take, which was you with a balloon under your sheets. So you had like a massive That's swelling. Right. <laughs> and I would wake up and look over at you and go, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Pete Jackson loved that stuff. He loves any of that. And he also, in that scene as well, I did a little um, a little nod to Harrison Ford. Oh, what was that? In um, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, when he takes the golden statue mm. and he puts a bag of sand on it. Mm. When I took the Palantir, I said to Pete, do you think it would be nice if I grabbed the vase? And when I took the Palantir, I put the vase in Brilliant. where um, Gandalf was holding it. And he, he went for it. And, and Gandalf is sleeping with his eyes open, which mm-hmm. is brilliant. Because as you go over, you think, oh, I've been oh. caught here. But then you realise that, you know, he's a wizard. So he sleeps with his eyes open. Yeah, like a shark. Very cool. Sweet. Well, that was that. That was Dom's Diary. Dom's Diary is brilliant. I hope we do that at least once a month. Oh, emails and real mails. Fast as tigers, slow as snails. Guys, as we said, if you have a question for myself or William Boyd, seated to my left. Hello. You can send us that voicemail at speakpipe.com forward slash the Friendship Onion. It could be about Lord of the Rings. It could be about anything. It could just be a question about life. You, you're quite a philosopher in your old age. You know? I tell you what, I know a lot about life and I've forgotten more than you know. Yeah, that is true. Mm-hmm. So let's see what we've got this week. But um, yeah, send us your questions. That I think we found out uh, today that there's 8,000 voice messages. That so we're going to do right now. If, yeah, if you want, if you want a, a much higher chance of your question being read out, 
Make it a question that we've not been ans- asked before. And say it very loudly. <laughs> yeah. No, don't say it very loudly. That wouldn't matter. Me? Yeah, but send it to speakpipe.com forward slash the friendship onion. And we'll do our best to get through all the questions with amazing answers. All right, here we go. Question number one. We're listening. Here we go. What's up, guys? My name is uh, Nicolo. I live so- in... Uh... Virginia in the United States. Um, thanks so much for doing this podcast. Really excited to to see where it goes. Um, really appreciate all the work you both have put in over the years in, in Lord of the Rings and your other projects as well. Um, my question is for both of you. I'm just curious, what is your favorite uh, non-Lord of the Rings project that you've worked on? Um, I remember seeing Dominic in Flash Forward uh, back in the day when that was on TV and, and really enjoyed him there. Of course, Lost as well. Um, I know Flash Forward never really gained the traction of some of the other shows, but I, I always really enjoyed it. So, yeah, what was your your favorite non-Lord of the Rings project that you worked on, whether it was TV, movie, music, uh, what have you? Uh, thanks so much, guys, and good luck with the podcast. What a lovely question, isn't Brilliant. it? Well, you know what? There's always something in every project you know there's something that maybe the town that it's in or there's always something to enjoy you know yeah. but I really loved Master and Commander mm-hmm. because I love being out on the tall ships and you know just sailing in the seas and that whole story was beautiful and if you'll remember Dom I had a little um, house down there because they put us up they put us up in a hotel mm. and the hotel was a golfing hotel and I didn't play much golf at that time. No. Nah. But they used to they used to water the 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 golf the the fairways and the greens with poo tainted water. Oh, I don't know if you remember that's that. A fertilizer. Yeah. yeah. So the place really smelled bad. So I asked if I could, you know, use the money that the hotel would cost to get a little house. And I got a little house, if you remember. Oh, I do. And everybody came to stay with me. I mean, there was a point where it was it was beyond a joke, really. It was a, it? because I found a little house that had a, a little wave in front of it, and everybody was surfing at that time. And you came down, yeah. and Elijah, and two of the stuntmen from Lord of the Rings, a couple and of people we used to surf with in New Zealand. Oh, so your wife, who was, was your like, girlfriend at the time? There was, was like there? fifteen people staying in a two bedroom. Everyone. I th- yeah, I think, like you said, probably fifteen or so people just yeah. sleeping all over the floor. But what a great experience because you would you were going to work very often but you'd created this kind of environment of just hang out surf i'm going to be at work until six when i come back maybe i'll jump into the ocean but it kind of felt like a little bit of a university frat house type yeah stuff. we had a little Brilliant. sort of happy commune going Brilliant. on down there i loved it so that was a that was a favorite one for me you had very very cool hair back then do you remember yeah do you remember long and you had big bushy sideburns and you were suntan but you, you kind of had like a like a bit of a 1970s kind of rock star, like a Credence Clearwater yeah, type I don't, I don't think I could do that now. But really? Yeah, it was, it was good at the time. They never tell you about your hair like that, do you? Like, like my hair's obviously getting thinner as I get older. But like the way that you style your hair then becomes compromised by how your hair wants to be. Like, if yeah. I want my hair to go crazy and be a bit wacky, yeah. I probably won't do that in the way that it used to anymore because well, there's not that much left of it. You put a picture up today on um, on Instagram, and a friend of ours has actually just commented on your hair. Oh, yeah. Uh, see if you can guess who would say this about you. Someone has just said, what has happened to Dom's hair? I'm going to start a GoFundMe to get him a stylist. Is it Nigel? It was Nigel, yeah. He's always, he kicks me right where it hurts. <laughs> he does, <laughs> doesn't he? Um... Wait, well, oh, oh, favorite project. Um, I think my favorite project was was my wildlife show. Oh, wasn't that a wonderful show? It's great because, uh, you know, as you know, as you get older and older in the business, having a semblance of control over what you're going to do and the artistic way that it's that it's moving forward is helpful because then every aspect of it is something that you like. So my wildlife show, Wild Things, had my voice. It was animals that I wanted to uh, discover and work with. It was places around the world that I wanted to shine a light on. And everything about that show was me. And also, I love to travel. I love exotic food. I love crazy animals. You came with me. 
It was Brilliant. great. To be yeah, able to do a show and think, oh, I'm going to invite Billy on the show. And they're like, yeah, invite Billy, that would be great. And you introduced people to a lot of animals they'd never have seen. Yeah. And I loved it. I thought that was brilliant. I'm going to watch it tonight. There there's, you are. A, there's a great moment with you and I, which I love, one of my favourites, where we're in New Zealand and we're working with a reptile called a tuatara. And I had said to you, so if you're looking at this thing right now, mm. what would you say it is? And you, and you said, well, I think it was a lizard because it has a face and a tail and a body and everything mm. that looks like a lizard, which is totally true. But it's a completely different type of reptile. It's not related to uh, lizards and snakes, even though it looks just like it because it's evolved in a completely different part of the world. I just think those, those moments in your life are mind-blowing where you think, well, that is something that I've seen before. It must be that. And then someone says, no, it's got it's not nothing to do with that. Incredible. To Atari, incredible, right? Yeah, beautiful. Brilliant question. 7,999 <laughs> to go. <laughs> Okay, first of all, um, so pumped you guys were doing this. Um, I love your dynamics so much. Uh, me and my best friend have been huge fans of your guys since like fifth grade. Um, so for years now. Um, and I just wanted to ask you guys, um, what is your favorite comedy movie and why? It's a great oh, question. We didn't find very out that good. <clears throat> young lady's name, unfortunately. No, we didn't. But she sounded like she had a really good mic or something. Maybe she good. wants to be anonymous. So we'll right, just, okay. We'll just call just her Miss, Miss Anonymous. Right, okay. Um, favourite comedy movie? <sighs> Probably This Is Spinal Tap for me. I uh, mean, yeah. 90 minutes, just from my own personal preference, there's not a film that is an hour and a half long that makes me laugh more. And the relationship between the lead singer... And the lead guitarist is absolutely adorable. So if you've never seen This Is Spinal Tap, check it out. I would say it's not one movie, and I could probably pick one if I had to, but the Pink Panther movies with Peter Sellers. Mm. Maybe The Return mm. of the Pink Panther mm. or A Shot in the Dark. Mm. I love those films. Guy was a genius. Brilliant. There's an incredible moment in A Shot in the Dark where, where he shows up to view the murder scene, my favourite, and the guy says to uh, Clouseau, would you like to see the body? And he says, I would be delighted. <laughs> <laughs> he just has some brilliant, brilliant moments. The, the spinning Pavlo of the globe thing. The Pavlova of the parallel bars. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see a shot in the dark. Yeah, a shot in the dark's brilliant. I'm going to watch that tonight as well. I've got a lot to do tonight. Right, next one. Keep them coming. Hello, Billy and Dom. Hello. My name is Mary. I am a huge fan, obviously. I love the Lord of the Rings. You guys are my favorite hobbits. Um, I love Lost. I love Master and Commander. Oh. I love Bee Cake, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, speaking of Bee Cake, um, segue, I was calling to <laughs> see if you guys could talk music what your favorite all-time musicians are, what you've been jamming to lately, whatever you like. I don't care. I'm just excited for the podcast. And I thought that would be a good topic if you haven't already discussed it or have been asked. Anyway, thank you so much. Love ya. Bye-bye. Oh, Mary. Lovely. Now, was it Mary or was it Mary? So here's the thing. <clears throat> Either way, we won't know. Will we? Well, I think it's M-A-R-Y which in the United States of America, most people pronounce like your name yeah. in Lord of the Rings, M-E-R-R-Y. Yeah. Mary and Mary are pronounced the same way in the United States, which I think was confusing for people when Lord of the Rings came out. Yeah. That they were like, oh, is his name Mary? Yeah. As in Mary? A, a lot of people will refer to me as Mary in the United States. Oh, you played Mary. Well, no, I'm not a girl's name. Yeah. But that's all right. But yeah, so that's confusing and Tolkien should have really taken that on board. Well, the, one, of the, one of the things about Tolkien's work that, that is a little challenging, but you just have to get through it, is he purposefully has characters that have names relatively similar, right? Yeah. Boromir, Faramir, Eowyn, Arwen, Saruman, Sauron... He's looking for a mirror yeah, to yeah. his characters. If you're not kind of concentrating on those books, you can sometimes go, wait, which, which one? That? Yeah, that I've got one? to go back a couple of pages. I don't want to criticise one of the greatest books of all time, but come on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it should be Zebedee. Yeah, yeah. And then you would go, yeah, I know who that is. 
So music, you're yeah. the musician out of the two of us. Well, see, right, well, music, lots, lots and lots. I was thinking, though, because someone asked me to go onto their music podcast about favourite albums and things, and I was thinking about the classics, and then I thought, you know what, let's think in the last 10 years, what do I listen to more than anything else? And it would be an album by King Creosote called The uh, the Diamond Mind. Mm-hmm. Diamond Mine, sorry. Mm. And uh, I listen to that album more than any other, even now. So I have to say that that's one of the greatest albums. That's Otherwise, a, why would I listen to it all the time? That's a great recommendation because I don't think that many people have their eyes on King Creosote, do they? Yeah, so I would say listen to King Creosote and listen to, in particular, The Diamond Mine. Do you find, like a lot of people who live the same cliched kind of uh, ideas with music as everyone else, that you, you kind of get stuck in a way mm. with the music that was influential in your late teens to early 20s. Do you know what I mean? You, I think so. And then it's there's so much music out there, but it's hard to get introduced to this stuff that's not in the mainstream. I just read a, um, a quote from, and I forget his name, maybe the most famous Japanese uh, writer of novels alive today. Mm, is it Mirazaki? It might be. And he said... The Wind Up Bird Chronicles, that guy. Uh, did he do the Q... There's one that's called Q19 or something. Was it? Um, anyway, he said, you know, if you read the same books as everyone else, you'll have the same ideas as everyone else. Mm. And I feel that way in any art. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So music, you do have to try and scrape your way out of the middle sometimes yeah. just to see what else is going on. Yeah. Well, you know who I'm going to start to kind of delve into their back catalogue? Because mm. I know that Lennon and McCartney rated him highly, and he is a real blind spot in my musical knowledge, is Frank Zappa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like his work, the, yeah. little, the little bits that I've heard, and he's crazy and madcap. Mm. But honestly, I couldn't name an album of his. No. Well, why don't we both do that, oh. and we'll talk about that, Let's do that sometime in the near future. If you guys want to ask us to listen to an album that for you guys has been incredibly influential or something that's changed your life or a song that's got you through a tough time, maybe it's some of Billy's music. Maybe it's the lesser known music that I've never released. <laughs> get, get in touch with us. I'll tell you what I'm into at the moment. Go. I'm, they're not necessarily new or anything, but I'm really enjoying their back catalogue is uh, the 1975. Oh, yeah. You Love. like them. You, you said to me a while ago. I think they're great. Yeah, you do. You really like them. Nice kind of upbeat summer jams, great videos, good design. I think for some reason... They went very big and popular, and that ultimately makes them slide down the other side of people being a bit passe about Okay. Them. But I think the music's great. You would know this more than me, but music has dramatically changed over the last decade, right? Like, no one's buying albums anymore, right? It's yeah. all singles. No one's really making mu- money like they used to make in music anymore. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? I I'd, I'd, um, I wouldn't mention names, but I've got a friend who's in a popular band, and he said... Now, when they're working out making a new album, music, they have to do it by financially saying, we won't make any money from the actual selling of the album. Wow. And he says, you know, he remembers the 90s when, you know, that's all the money came from selling the album. And then you go on tour just to sell the album. Now they go on tour to sell T-shirts and, you know, to make a living because they don't make any money from the music. Crazy. Crazy. Beautiful. Okay, is there another question? That's it. That out of the 7,000 questions, only three of them were worthwhile. That's amazing. People, you need to do better. Send better questions to speakpipe.com forward slash the friendship onion. Thanks, friends. So throughout last year, with us all going through this COVID corona time, you were obviously with your wife and son, but I spent probably January till August on my own in my house. Wow. And I remember reaching out to you saying, hey, Bill, I've picked up this game online, which is free to play, 
free to download. And it means that if you were to play it with me, we would have that little interaction because it's like yeah. getting on the phone. Because you with, can talk with, to each other. You can chat to each other. Yeah. The game's called League of Legends. Mm -hmm. It's a MOBA. Do you know what a MOBA is? M-O-B-A. Mobile, outside, broadcast, oblivious. Four out of four wrong there. And what? oblivious does not start with an A. Oh, what <laughs> did you say, A? Eh? Yeah, MOBA. You no, I don't know. I don't know what it means. Multiplayer, online, battle arena. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. that's what it is. Is it? So you you tell people at home, what, like, what is, what, what's League of Legends? What is right, it? for anyone that doesn't know League of Legends, you, you, you choose a warrior, a champion, if you will, mm -hmm. and then you and four other champions go into a map that's always the same, and it's kind of like Catch the Flag, because you've got to get to the other person's base station and blow up their flag thing. Well, Nexus. Well, they're all trying to get to yours and blow up your flag thing. Nexus. But the champion that you have will have certain amounts of powers yeah. activated by the letters Q, W, E, and R. Yeah. So it sounds very, very simple. You have a champion. They have special abilities. Only four special abilities, but there's about 150 champions. And you have to pick who you kind of prefer. So at the moment... You're rocking on a guy called Dr. Mundo. What, <laughs> what's Dr. Mundo's deal? Dr. Mundo is a jungler, so he doesn't hang around with other people. No. He goes in the jungle and, and destroys creatures and becomes super strong and then helps out everyone else in his team. And Dr. Mundo's kind of superpower is that he can absorb a huge amount of damage because it actually heals him when he takes damage. Is that right? Kind of, but... If you're not very good at Dr. Mundo, which I am not, people in the team, when it's not you or one of our friends, will tell me that I'm rubbish. Yeah. There's a thing called flaming in League of Legends, and that's when you kind of shout and scream at people. And Billy and I have been in games where people have said, you two are the worst players of this champion we've ever seen. And we and said, that, oh, thanks very much. Somebody said to me the other day, please don't play again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had someone say, delete the game. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. It's just a game. Just, we're just trying to chat to each other and have a nice time. But what's interesting about League of Legends, and if you've not played it, they don't sponsor the show. They've got nothing to do with the show. We just really like playing it. When it's bad, when you've finished a game where you've been absolutely destroyed and yeah, demoralized, yeah. it's a kind of two out of ten. But when it's good, it's a good ten out of ten, isn't it? When we, they're doing a game just now where everyone's the same character and we all played Dr. Mundo. One for all, Dr. Mundo. And we had a great time. Didn't Brilliant. We? So the reason why we're telling you about League of Legends is there's a pretty strong chance that in the upcoming shows, Billy and I might have little mentions of League of Legends here and there. So if you want to follow along with some of the jargon that we're going to use playing League of Legends, download the game, it's free, play the game, and then tell us about your stories about people shouting at you, telling you to delete the game as well so that we don't feel as bad. And if you join the game, bring a positivity to it. Yeah. We're going to make it a game where everyone says, well done. Yeah. Or if you're not playing too good, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. Right, Tom. Well. Is that it? That's almost it. But I did want to tell you, I went to a physio yesterday mm -hmm. because I've hurt my knee slightly from jumping too high. But you hurt your knee years ago. That was that knee. Bike. Oh, it's a different knee? Yeah. So that knee is knackered. That knee is an awful knee. But it's still, you know, it'll take me around in right. the place. But this one has now started something. So I went to the physio and he basically says what's wrong is whenever I'm doing anything, I'm not activating my butt enough. Right. So I have if you to, don't mind me saying, you've got quite a small posterior. Incredible. If I wear any pants without a belt, they will fall down. Right. Even squats. the correct size. Get your squats in. Yeah, we did squats. And what I have to do is activate my butt more. Even in squats, I'll activate my thighs, which are very strong. Mm. I can kick a soccer ball tremendous yeah. distances. Yeah. But I need to activate my butt more, so I'll be working on that in the next few weeks. If there's anyone out there that would like to encourage Billy to activate his butt more, um, just send us an email. Yeah. At, um, friendshiponion at castmedia.com. Or 
if you want to be involved in the quiz. We've told you this before, but you can uh, send us an email there or you can send us a message at speakpipe.com forward slash The Friendship Onion. If you have if you have enjoyed the show, oh, please yeah. rate, review, and subscribe. Here's the thing, guys, right? If you're enjoying the show, you want to subscribe so that you don't have to keep looking for us every week. It just turns up on your phone. The other thing that you might not know about, and we're here to tell you, is if you rate and review us, it pushes us up further in the charts. It means that we can do this show longer. We can dish the dirt a little bit more about <laughs> life in general, tell your secrets about Lord of the Rings. Everyone's happy. So get involved. Get in touch with us. We'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week on The Friendship Onion. Bring us in another can of Bonderberg, uh, John, and we will get absolutely wrecked.